Okay, fifth graders, here we are in seven, where are we, seven, seven dash four. Okay, and we're subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. So um, let's just take a, a quick look at what they've set up here for us. Um, it says Linda used a quarter of the yard of fabric that she bought for a sewing project. How much fabric did she have left? Well, well she started with two thirds and she used a quarter of it. So um, we're going to be subtracting fractions. But before we do this one, look, if, if I had, um, let's say I had three quarters and I'm subtracting one quarter. All right, it's easy because the denominators are the same. So I can just subtract one from three and what do I get? I get two, two quarters or that's the same as one half. Okay, I think you guys can recognize that. But just like when we're adding fractions, when you subtract, you need to have the denominators the same. So what do we have here? We have two thirds and we're subtracting one quarter. What's the common denominator for three and four? All right, hopefully most of you would recognize, oh, that's gonna be 12. Four goes into 12, three times, times one is three. Three goes into 12, um, four times, and four times two is eight. Remember, this is subtraction. So three from eight is five. Five twelfths is the answer. And so if you look in your book and the steps that they go through, you can see that they do end up with five twelfths. All right. Down at the bottom here, looking for my pen, what did I do with it? There it is. Um, that convinced me, it says, suppose Linda had two thirds of a yard of fabric and told Sandra that she used three quarters of a yard. Sandra says, this is not possible. Do you agree or not? And then explain your answer. Um, she cannot. Um, so, um, let's see here. Sandra is correct. And that's because, um, well, one is larger than the other. So let's, let me show you first. Let's just take two thirds here. And let's take um, three fourths. Let's get a common denominator. All right, so what's gonna be the common denominator? Between three and four, it's gonna be 12 again. Four goes into 12 three times, and three times three is nine. Three goes into 12 four times, and four times two is eight. Wow, that got loud. Um, so now we have two fractions, eight twelfths, and another one is nine twelfths. The nine twelfths represents the three quarter that she used. Can you subtract nine from eight? No, she, she used more fabric than there was available. Okay, so explain. She, so I, I guess you could say nine twelfths is more than eight twelfths. Okay, hopefully you guys see that. All right, um, guided practice, next page. What have we got here? Um, it says in the example on page 282, um, is it possible to use a common denominator greater than 12 and get the correct answer? Uh, yes, yes. Um, any common denominator will work. And we did a problem like that the other day. I think I did. 
that even if you have a larger common denominator, it'll still work. Um, in the example on page 282, if Linda had started with one yard of fabric and used five-eighths of a yard, how much fabric would be left? Well, so if the common denominator is eight, what would represent one? One would equal eight over eight. So what would we do? We'd simply, we could write it like this, eight over eight, and we're subtracting. What did she use? Five eighths. Five from eight is what? Three eighths. All right, three eighths would be left. Or three eighths of a yard. All right. Three through six, find each difference. You could do three. You, could, you guys could do these. What's the common the not? What's the common denominator for this one here? It's going to be eight. What's going to be the common denominator for number five here? Well, start with the largest one. Three doesn't go into eight evenly, so double it. Does eight eight plus eight is sixteen? Does three go into sixteen evenly? Nope. Add another eight. 16 plus 8 is 24. Does 3 go into 24 evenly? Yes, it does. If you're not sure what the denominator would be, always start with the largest number and begin doubling it and tripling it until you find that the other number will go into it also. Uh, they use 30 for this one. You guys can do that. All right. Down in the leveled practice, they call it. Um, what would go here? Two and one. Um, let's see here. Go down a little bit further. Um, how about this one? Two ninths. And we're subtracting one sixth. What could be the common denominator we would use? Well, six won't fit into nine evenly, but uh, so let's double nine. How about 18? Does six go into 18 evenly? It does. It goes into 18 three times. And nine goes in twice. Okay. Um, yeah, you guys should be able to do the rest of these, I think, on your own. All right. Let's look at the last page. Trying to arrange this on my document camera here so you guys can see. So it says, write and solve an equation to find the difference between the location of point A and point B on the ruler. So the difference between point A and point B. So can you guys read a ruler? Do you know what this mark is right here? This one? That's a half. What's half of a half right here? That's one quarter. So B, I'm just gonna come over here. B equals one quarter. And so what would be right here? This would be three quarters. All right. So then this would be, um, this mark right here would be eighths. And let's see here. How do I know that? Um, because there'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight eighths. All right. In um, in one. The next mark would be sixteenths. Notice how they're getting progressively smaller. First, we started with a half. Then we went to quarters. And then we went to eighths, and the last one is sixteenths. Okay, and so these little tiny lines here, here and and here and here, those are sixteenths. So how many sixteenths is a? Um, it's almost hard for me to read. I think it's thirteen sixteenths. Uh, so half. It'd be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yep, 13 sixteenths. So A equals 13 sixteenths. And what are we subtracting? We're subtracting one quarter 
from 13 sixteenths because we've got to find the difference. 13 sixteenths, subtracting one quarter. What's the common denominator? Well, it should be obvious, it's 16. I'll let you guys figure the rest of that one out. All right, number 18, write an addition and subtraction equation for the diagram and then find the missing value. So, an addition and subtraction. So an addition would be one quarter plus three eighths. And that equals, that would be X equals what the answer is. And um, another one, another equation would be X minus one quarter because remember x is the full length x minus this piece this length right there equals three eighths okay so once you find x then you can plug that in number 19 why do fractions need to have a common denominator before you can add or subtract them um, you can only add or subtract um, well I, I would say equal parts Yeah, I think that works. I like that. You could only add and, add and subtract equal parts. So in other words, uh, three quarters, subtracting one quarter. You guys know, as we, that was the very first problem I did, is two quarters, whoops, two quarters, um, which is equal to one half. But if, if we were taking parts of fifths or sixths or eighths or sixteenths it wouldn't work we'd have to get the same denominator all right um let me see here number 20 without using paper and pencil how would you find the sum of okay i'll let you guys do that one on your own 21 find the fraction with the difference of one fifth but neither denominator is equal to five Ooh, let's see here. Let's see if this works. I'll let you guys try this one. Seven tenths. Um, uh, seven tenths and three quarters. See if you can use those and if that will work. 22 and 23, I think you can do on your own. Choose the correct numbers from the box to complete the subtraction problem. Choose the correct numbers. Yep, you guys can do that. Okay, that's it. Gosh, reasonably easy lesson because we're just subtracting now. And, and when we're subtracting, you just get the common denominator and subtract the numerators. So, okay, that's it. I will talk to you guys later.